Yes, welcome once again to Rally Fever. Well, the MSA Gravel Rally Championship starts, of course, in Bournemouth, in the Winter Gardens, and Caroline Samuels was mixing it with an absolute horde of fans. Hello and welcome to Bournemouth for the first round of the Pirelli MSA Gravel Rally Championship. Yes, we have new sponsors this year. We also have some new faces at the front of the field in the form of Julian Reynolds, Andy Burton and Will Nichols, all of whom are going to be full tilt to win the championship. There's going to be some MG Metros running on the stages at this event to commemorate their win here 21 years ago, the hands of Malcolm Wilson. I'm looking forward to seeing them in action. Yes, a lovely collection of cars for the demonstrations and also three Metro 6R4s running in the event proper, but problems for Craig Bennett in his car. Craig, a bit of drama at the start line here. Yes, uh, we've had a bit of a meltdown in the wiring loom. Uh, don't know what's happened, but we'll hopefully get it sorted. You're going to get it fixed? Don't know, hopefully. <laughs> How much time have you got? Uh, about an hour, ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah. He's working away frantically there? Yeah, yeah. Do you need any parts? I saw him shouting out just now. No, we're just we're trying to get a knife to get this wiring loom separated here. So. Some old faces returning to the series. Charlie back for the season. Looking forward to it? Yeah, we're going to try a few events. I've been out for two years plus, so um, I went out uh, two weeks ago, and, but unfortunately uh, left-hand drive caught me and I took the front wheel off. So hopefully good run today, see how we go. Get a few of those cobwebs out the system. Absolutely. You're looking forward to the cars handling well other than yeah, using your left? Yeah, fine, absolutely fine. No excuses. It's just the driver? Yeah, just the driver. And what do you got think it in one. <laughs> what do you think of the competition? Ah, oh, it's a strong field, strong field, so but we're just out for a steady run today. After his widening result, Nick Ellsmore was optimistic. I'm still awaiting orders from Idrex whether we can push under 10%. Um, so we'll give it a good go on these first two stages and uh, we'll assess our situation for tomorrow. Do you like this rally? Yeah, I do, yeah. We've had a, a bit of bad luck and a lot of good luck on the event. So um, I'm pretty optimistic and uh, hopefully we'll get a good result. Daniel Law smiles at the beginning of the season. Yeah, no, we're happy enough. Um, car seems good and we've been done a good bit of work over to the car over the, over the winter and uh, looking forward to it now yeah looking forward to the championship so I'm glad to get started <laughs> and what do you think of these night stages ah, it just doesn't really bother me you know night or day doesn't really bother me. once you have the, the lamp pot on it should be all right you know as long as you remember to put it on <laughs> what's the plan for the year hey uh, again we're going to do the first round and assess it from there uh, now the, the second round the border counties clashes with the scottish championship as well so We'll need to make our minds up on what car we're going to use, but uh, no, I'd imagine we'll continue with the whole championship. I think you still have a chance of getting the Mitsubishi title? Yeah, there's always a chance, you know, but I think this year is going to be, you know, one of the most competitive years the Mitsubishi Challenge has ever seen. So, no, good stuff. A lot of quick Irish drivers over this year, which is good to see, but to be the best, you've got to beat the best. And it's great to see a good Scottish driver down here as well. Aye, that's it. Try and cause some trouble. <laughs> Scottish, Irish and Welsh. Band of attack for tonight. I think these two, I'd, I'd generally just, just get through them and and um, wait, for the, wait for the proper rally to start tomorrow, really. Calms your nerves a bit. It does, yeah, but probably I'll have a sleepless night tonight, waiting for tomorrow morning. But Julian, you've got an old world rally car here and you're going to take it to the boys this year, are you? Uh, we'll have a go and see if we can ski a few people, see what we can do. How does it feel? The car's great, yeah, it's fantastic. and uh, I hope I hope the Group M boys don't beat me, but uh, anything, anything in front of that, then I'll be happy. <laughs> And what do you think about mixing it in the top three, maybe? No, I don't think there's much chance of that, but uh, maybe later in the year, but uh, this event, maybe not. And here's the favourite for victory. Mark is out for a possible sixth Rally Sunseeker victory. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be tough. It's a long way to go, but uh, we'll be trying. You're going to be watching out for Bertie? Uh, yeah, I think John Ingram will go well. Stephen Moore's pretty quick. He's got a good car as well, so we'll see. It's a very different looking field this year, isn't it? Yeah, there's a few of the standard names aren't there and a few new extra ones, which is good. Uh, keep us on our toes. Yeah, standard names. By that he means Roger Duckworth. And indeed, Steve Perez still injured from his uh, historic safari event. Now, here is this uh, stage. The uh, Friday night event, always popular attracts a huge crowd to the center of Bournemouth a little run through the winter gardens then a naturally bit and then turning left here onto the prom a long run down the prom with a couple of old chicanes very tricky surface down by the seafront here and 
cars run in reverse order they run twice there's Andrew Barnes going through one of the two focuses from the uh, Jardine Lloyd Thompson team number 26 there is uh, Alan Cookson and his Subaru WRC some uh, best part of 20 WRC cars here Neil McCants one of the uh, leading contenders of course for the Mitsubishi Evo challenge which uh, starts here the British version now we've got Swedish versions and Irish versions of that championship as well that was Steve Fleck and uh, this is Nick Ellsmore great uh, second place behind uh, Andy Burton on the opening round of the BTRDA championship this is uh, David Bogey the uh, Young flying Scotsman certainly will be one of the favourites to win the Evo Challenge. And he will have to beat Sebastian Ling, the uh, Welshman in that beautifully prepared yellow car there. Steve Petsch Jr. now moved up to the WRC Hyundai, no longer in uh, Group N. Stephen Moore, the Irish Forestry Rally Champion and his ex-factory uh, focus. Interesting to see how he goes. Here is Sean Devine, also coming over from Ireland in that uh, X-Factory Subaru WRC. And this is uh, Will Nichols, another Subaru WRC. What an entry we've got here. Nichols from the Isle of Man. We can go on board, see how this stage looks now with uh, Julian Reynolds. Julian with this 10-year-old Subaru Impreza WRC has moved out of Group N. Turn square right round barriers, square left, and under bridge into turn tight, six left, 80 down mid. See how narrow it is there. Now onto the prom. Interesting to see how Reynolds gets on. Now he's moved out of group N. Next one up, reverse order, running twice, of course. And there is uh, John Ingram. And this is a car he's hired from McKinstry, another one to come. I think so. Yeah, 132.89 I made that. Yeah. Well, John happy with that time, but it proved controversial. Apparently, he started the stage 30 seconds early. He said the marshals uh, actually told him to go, and he got a penalty for that, which uh, really did hurt him. Here's Andy Burton, who is registered for the championship, and so is Marcus Dodd. Said he was going into retirement, but instead will possibly contest the full championship. Back in service, Saturday morning. Marcus, maybe not exactly the start you wanted to get off to last night. Uh, no, we had a few issues with the gearbox and the clutch, which uh, we've now found out what the problem was. But um, it wasn't too bad. We didn't lose too much time. And I don't really like those stages anyway. A bit too short, a bit too narrow for me. So it's the proper stuff today? Yeah, back into the forest. So we'll see. Take a bit of time to get back into it, I suppose. But, uh, you know, looking forward to it. And Ellsmore was a top man on the prom. Nicky started off in good style. That's right, yeah, fastest overall. That's uh, pretty good going considering the uh, technology that's in the field. Very pleased. Continue today? Yeah, I hope so. You know, we had very good pace on the Wydeen. Uh, unfortunately, we had a puncher on stage two. It's dropped us a little bit back. But uh, it was good to get ready in the stages with, you know, little problems. And the rally does start today. Steve, you got the rally off to a good start, didn't you? Oh yeah, it's uh, my sort of surface tarmac, so today would be a different thing. We just slowly watch ourselves progressively go down the leaderboard, but uh, at, least, uh, at least I won the first day, which is very important. Well, it puts you in good stead for the rest of the stages, and you can yeah. surely make a bit of a push. No, it's good, given me a bit of confidence. I haven't really been in a car for two years, and uh, no, it's given me a nice bit of confidence. So yeah, we are going to try. We're not giving up straight away. David, I thought it was steady away last night. Yeah, it was actually, so no, I was quite pleased with the time to be second overall starting this morning, it was good, so I got a good sleep last night, I was a happy boy, so it's all good. Ready for a full-on attack today? Yeah, I think so, obviously got to get to the end, points make prizes, but uh, yeah, I'll be on a bit of a push today. How's the car feeling? Yeah, car feels good, never driven it on gravel since last November in the Cambrian, so it'll take a bit of getting into, but uh, different tyres, different <laughs> fuel, so it can only really be better, I suppose. Big crowd turning up here at uh, the Stape Hill stage, sponsored by Silverstone Rally School. Just 2.86 miles long, but uh, a few tricky gate posts on this one. We're down in the Hampshire Dorset borders. Home, of course, to Marcus Dodd. 
the man looking for yet another victory on this uh, rally Sunseeker organized by the Southern Car Club and I'll get it right this year the Croydon District Motor Club who do a great job and uh, Marcus setting the pace here as to be expected will almost certainly come off the end of this stage uh, taking the lead wasn't in the lead coming in after those two little stages on uh, Friday night co-driver again this year Andrew Bargery also lives down in this area although of course from a famous Isle of Man rallying family originally Andy Burton then this uh, spectacular car with the uh, Jaguar blocked Cosworth V6 engine in the rear the space frame chassis the Peugeot ice racing panels and the magnificent engineering in literally a farmyard by the man from the Ludlow area the farmer Andy Burton fantastic rally driver brilliant engineer and uh, above all else what a wonderful sound this car makes and Andy will be doing the whole of the Ancro Championship the MSA Gravel Rally Championship this year looking for lots of points here on this event an event he doesn't know that well now here is the uh, Highgrove Estates car the McKinstry hire machine of John Ingram he will have a newer car than this apparently for the remainder of the season and uh, John Ingram develops property up in Cheshire in fact builds executive houses just taking a look at the uh, website the other day and uh, some pretty spectacular properties that uh, John's developing here's one of those nasty little uh, 90 lefts onto a very narrow track indeed these uh, forests around the uh, Hearn area well known to uh, cut up quite badly but uh, thus far this track in uh, very good condition giving uh, plenty of grip just see the uh, car going up through the gears now this run into a, a very tricky 90 right by a gate where a couple of years ago when it was snowy and icy we had uh, umpteen overshoots you've just got to get this right it's like uh, threading uh, the eye of a needle there so that was uh, John Ingram expect him to be right up uh, in the hunt Julian Reynolds then the uh, Welshman with the fencing business right on the ragged edge here coming into that corner on the uh, limit of adhesion and uh, down into this uh, tight corner and again uh, almost locking up twitches sideways turns it in and uh, right through the mirror, middle of the gate post go on board to see if uh, Patrick Walsh is getting a, a spectacular ride I think he is going to the end of the stage now with this uh, long run And Reynolds uh, stops the clock there with a time of uh, 244.4. Dodd having done 239.1 and Burton 240.7. Obviously not a long stage, so everybody pretty close. Here is uh, Will Nichols then. Will, former winner of the uh, Tempest Rally. Runs a car business on the Isle of Wight and gets uh, backing from the red funnel line. Now this is a very interesting car indeed, Stephen Moore. This was the car that Marcus Gronholm used to win the uh, Wales Rally GB two years ago. This is Sebastian Ling, backed by his father's uh, state agency business in uh, West Wales and uh, we know that Sebastian will be uh, very quick in the Mitsubishi Challenge. But he'll have to beat this man, uh, David Bogey, the uh, young Scot who also is doing the Scottish Rally Championship in the Oak Bank Services car just uh, clips the uh, hay bale 300 go on go on part 6 right push he shouted right. because the intercom isn't working right, push. hand signals too go on two right one left, keep going, keep going. Irish crew. Five left, push. 
co-driver trying to really make uh, Barry go quickly. Here he